This is the Vegan Anarchist, and in this video is going to be Capitalism or Eat Itself. Get ready for Sociology, because I'm a Sociologist. See my shirt? See? <laughs> That's my major, by the way. Um, first let's, let's, look at, before we talk about the whole Capitalism or Eat Itself, uh, this could be through the lens of that Marx developed called his dialectical materialism, historical materialism. The, I'm just going to call the lens dialectic for just for, for convenience sake. And you see, when Marx saw, let me tell you how it's going to impact capitalism and how, but Marx, when, in sociology, Marx is kind of very influential. Even though he kind of fell off in like, favor, he's still influential because he has, like, for example, his theory of social change, which I'm going to describe you right now, and apply it to capitalism, and what we have right now. So, Trump has basically got the different modes of production from feudalism to capitalism, but the thing is, is that his idea was. What made the mode of production strong would become its downfall, or what became its downfall in terms of the password. So like, for example, hunter-gatherers. What made hunter-gatherers strong? They live off the land, they, they gather, they, they, they probably hunt occasionally. But, the, which is the thesis, but the anti-thesis is, there's so many, so many plants you could pick, there's only so many D you could pick, live off of. So what happens to synthesis is they cancel each other out and people have to go to go to a horticultural society. And then the same process will make horticulturalism so good, like basically growing plants small scale became its downfall because you ruined the soil. And in agriculture, which which had upside of surpluses, but because you have surpluses, the antithesis is people want that surplus, so they're gonna rob you. So then, that synthesis you run towards feudalism, and in feudalism, you got the people who lost everything goes to the, become joints of the lord. However, they become serfs and and they constantly get invaded, but they have to pay all those taxes. Life is miserable. And the only thing that kept them was shaped was religion, and then people didn't think it's fine and bullshit, and voila! Disintegrated and it led to what we have as capitalism. And capitalism has many contradictions, and I'm going to give you a few scenarios how capitalism would collapse within our life, my lifetime. I'm 19, by the way, but yeah! Um, the first way it could collapse is basically wages. You know how wages are. Everybody uses a credit card because since the eighties, wages basically hasn't risen very much, and since the nineties, it's actually probably actually down. So people made up that difference by using credit cards. So. Uh, the strength of capitalism is you get abundance of consumer items. Like Walmart, Toys R Us, Home Depot. You have all these goods you can consume, but they consume it on credit. And people get massive amounts of credit card debt. And that will become its downfall in this scenario because when people get into credit card debt, for example, they're going to start, eventually it goes bad enough, they don't default. And if it defaults bad enough, it'll lead to a recession or maybe a depression. Or we'll just wipe out credit altogether and capitalism will be destroyed because people are unable to consume things because they aren't able to borrow. That's one scenario. So what based on that scenario, the consumption led to capitalist downfall. Another similar thing is because we consume so much, we destroy the earth, we destroy Everything's polluted, it's like a dystopian nightmare. And capitalism destroys itself because people get sick from pollution and you know, we destroy the planet, which is also was also happening. Those two all are very likely. However, there is a, another option that that is very interesting 
Now I'm hoping what will happen will probably be a combination of one of these, some of these, or all of these, or whatever, or none of these. It could be a different one. And that one is basically technology. The and, and by the way, um, I'm also a what is called a, te a soft technological determinist. It basically just means the technological determinist is someone who thinks that to, to changes in technology fundamentally affects the social, political, cultural, economic system around you, so it actually helps determine it. I'm not like it doesn't absolute, but there is a lot of, it has a lot of power. And then Mark, it came from, it developed out of Marx and people, anyways. So, what's been happening? Well, first we have the internet, well not first, but what happened was like, for example, the printing press changed society around it. So did the Industrial Revolution. Fundamentally, the Neolithic, fundamentally, we're going to the Information Revolution. The internet was born 20, 30 years ago, and well, that's when it became used in the 90s, so it started to be. Social media has barely started like a decade ago. Or, 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 and so, and because of that, politicians cannot keep secrets. They're going to expose pe people who are otherwise not in the mainstream, have no idea to share, so they share, and that's why I discovered anarchism. And that will have wide effects on the political system of today. In addition, we have artificial intelligence and robots starting to take away people's jobs. But as people get replaced by robots, the capitalists need those people, workers to buy from them when there's less and less work who can afford that. You see the problem? They're not going to be enough, so either they're going to have to expand a welfare state or or just a revolution. <laughs> but, but, but the changes of technology isn't just, isn't just limited to that, but it basically you have entire car factories that doesn't have, maybe at most one people allow them, may have nobody except the guy who occasionally checks on it. There's entire factories with no employees, stores with nobody, farms with nobody, computer program, automated, artificial intelligence. So labor isn't needed. And um, people could starve, so they're going to have to expand a welfare state. But another uh, thing that also is going to happen, or could, I think it's, Definitely gonna happen. The, the one I just illustrated right now is gonna happen, and is that the increase in technology at such a rapid pace is gonna basically destroy capitalism. And let me explain. Like for example, three D printers will <laughs> will basically get rid of so many manufacturing jobs. It will. And it'll be all, and then it will also make it hard for government to regulate guns. And because it changes in technology so fast, people may not be have a traditional job anymore. But a lot of them would instead have their own means of production. And this technology will just get so cheap and cheap and cheap that even if they're broke, they they get they could get a, scrub a few pe some the money, and then they get their own means of production. So. And that's a problem because then the government would have to regulate it. And the problem is it's going so fast, they can't, they, they can't keep up with it. Eventually, there's going to be a point where it's going to go so fast, they can't keep up with it. So the government becomes irrelevant. And also capitalism, because people have their own means of production of like 3D printers, that kind of means that socialism, it's a form of socialism that just developed organically. And ironically, when a government tries to protect capitalism, it, it actually 
Mises destroy capitalism because of things like the internet and all sorts of innovations like iPhone, which is going to contribute to the destruction of capitalism that they are trying to protect, or historically since capitalist time. And that, and you see, technology would be advanced a lot faster if we didn't have capitalism. But what's happening is that capitalists are trying to keep technology from advancing because. We probably have, we already have the technology, for example, to not be able to drive gasoline. But it's been so suppressed. It's, they try, but they can only do it for so long. And ironically, there's going to be entrepreneurs. And this is like a mutualist nightmare. By the way, Kevin Carson uh, wrote a book, book about the, the industrial, next industrial revolution, homemade industrial revolution, which is a good book to read. But anyways. What was that? Oh yeah, they can, they, the big companies may not, but the entrepreneurs would invest in like 3D printers or or, or innovative technologies. I'm using 3D printers as an example. And ironically, they're doing it to get rich, but instead of getting rich, they just sow the seeds of capitalism to destruction. They just put gasoline on the fire at least. It's ironic. It's really ironic. So in this case, the entrepreneur would actually be capitalism's worst enemy. <laughs> and this ironic is capitalists like to praise the entrepreneur. Isn't that ironic? So not only entrepreneurs would, it, it, it's going to get to a point where it's going to go so fast, it can't regulate it, it's undermining capitalist profits. People are basically, socialism is going to develop naturally because of such fast and technological innovation will allow people to have their own means of production, which is what Kevin talked about in the homebrew industrial revolution. So it's going to basically marginalize the state and create socialism, which probably means it might turn us into an anarchist society, potentially, assuming we don't destroy the earth and humans don't go extinct, of course. And it's very exciting because <laughs> we don't have to worry about working very much and it's all sorts of weird things. And that is not an excuse not to do anything because the, I am not like strict because I think that, I, I am not like think it's going to go with this deterministic, I think it's when it comes to Marxist dialectic, I think there's a lot of room it could go, but it just means that capitalism is going to eat itself out. That is why the government, for example, is trying to take control of the internet, the U.S. is trying to give it to the U.N., they're having, trying to get corporations to monopolize the internet so they can control the information because they cannot afford to have this, all this technology just become mainstream. They can't afford it. They'll lose everything. The capitalists will lose. And that's the beauty. Because they can't stop it. That's, you can only stop where it's so long. And it's, in a way, it's poetic, in a way. But since there's so many ways we still have to act, it doesn't mean we shouldn't act, it means we should act. Because people like to say, oh, you can't win against the government or capitalism. But capitalism, right now, is on the foes of destroying itself. As Marx predicted, the rate of profits have gone down. Although the corporation will profit whatever, but the rate of profit is not doing very well. So, it's eating itself out as we speak. And that is not an opportunity to sit back and let whatever happens happen, but an opportunity to seize the moment and use it to help create the society we want. We, we have the power. This generation, my generation, the younger generation, have the power to basically get rid of capitalism. <laughs> and because the technology that the government innovated and the capitalism made widespread is going to lead to its own destruction.
But no, we should do, we should definitely, that means we, that, oh, that means it's the perfect time to do it. This is the perfect time to do Nerd Dash and Revolution, all this stuff, because the system is weak at this moment. It's about to end. It's our job to make sure it ends in the anarchist. Well, if you're, if you're an anarchist, many people are not the lot of socialists. But I'm not an anarchist, but I'm trying to get to anarchism. It could be mutualism, it could be, it could be even go back to feudalism for God's sake. Who knows? But that's where we step in. We have the momentum. The tide is with us. The wind is with us. It doesn't mean we sit back, but the opposite. We fight. And trust me, I learned about this in sociology, the theory of Marxist theory, and I just applied it to this video to just give you a dialectical analysis of why capitalism is going to fall. Assuming dialectics is right, but you know, it's a pretty consistent pattern. So, anyways, this is the vegan anarchist. No me, no Mel, no masses. Learn sociology. 